get ready, my son, get ready. They're calling for passengers to board. The ship is about to set sail. And what to say to you of some word? Our guest of honor today at our St. Andrews Turi 2020 seat today has an international reputation as a man of the arts and performer. He has asked to say more about himself in his speech, making my job very easy. Allow me to introduce Mr. John C.B. Okumu. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried Grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged comrade. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. Costly thy habit, as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Board of Governors, Headmaster, the whole community of St. Andrew's Tory, and especially you students of the departing year 13. Headmaster, thank you for inviting me to speak to your school in these novel conditions. Chief of which is that my speech should have a 15 minute time limit, which guarantees a limit to possible boredom at least for some. I must say that I am glad to be part of such a long tradition. So, where to begin? Perhaps by attempting to create a human connection between us. I am a Kenyan, living in Kenya. I am a parent, although grown-ups. I too was a boarder for six years at a high school, although an all-boys one, in the dinosaur days, which were the 1960s and 1970s. Boarding school was not as welcoming as it is nowadays. Juniors had to be bullied by seniors as a rite of passage, and there were some tough punishments to endure. Happily, things have changed for the better. As I went on to gain a public profile as a stage and film actor, as a radio and television presenter and as a writer, my day job for more than 25 years before I retired was as a teacher of French mainly to eight-year-olds in elementary school all the way up to high school. And what to say to you of some worth? As I prepared for today, I was reminded of the first famous words of advice from an adult to a young person, which I had encountered. As a high school senior myself, a group of us got onto the school bus, accompanied by a teacher, who had to put up with the huge racket we were making as we headed for the Kenya National Theatre to see a performance of the play Hamlet, Prince of Denmark by William Shakespeare it was to leave a huge impression on me. For those of you who are unfamiliar with it, I shall spare you the complete storyline and jump in. Now, that's really cool to say these days, isn't it? Yes, jump in on the advice given by a character called Lord Polonius to his son, Laertes, who is on his way to university far away France. As I have said, I first heard these words spoken on a stage 
before revisiting them written down. To have the old English spoken about 400 years ago make more sense to modern listeners, let me provide some short paraphrasing in segments as we go along. Lord Polonius. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. Get ready, my son, get ready. They're calling for passengers to board. The ship is about to set sail. And these few precepts in thy memory see thou character. And don't forget these words of advice. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Think before you speak, and be careful what you say. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. You can be chatty, but never use foul language. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged comrade. Stay close to your friends, but don't let them, especially new ones, lead you to bad behavior. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear it, that the opposed may beware of thee. Avoid getting into arguments, but if you can't avoid them, make your stand clear. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Listen to everybody, but give your support to only a few. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Accept criticism, but weigh it carefully. Costly thy habit, as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Buy clothes which you can afford, tasteful but not flashy. First impressions are important. And they, in France, of the best rank and station are of a most select and generous chief in that. And where you are going, cultured people are going to pay close attention to the way you present yourself. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. Don't borrow or lend money. Your loan may not be repaid, and that could ruin a good friendship. And you will always find being in debt restricting. This above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Most importantly, tell your own truth because then inevitably no one can ever accuse you of lying farewell my blessing season this in thee bye bye and always remember to follow this advice and very good advice it is too however I quickly decided that this kind of do this, don't do that approach would be inappropriate in the circumstances. Inappropriate when the strict prevailing instructions are stay at home, wash your hands thoroughly and frequently, keep your distance, stay safe. Well, cleanliness for one has always been a given, but will we be obliged to stay at home forever? I hope not. 
And isn't isolation quite boring after a while? Aren't we all yearning to get back to meeting as many other people as possible whenever we want to? And will staying safe remain our primary concern from day to day? Again, I hope not. I realized that right now, you would see right through this speech if I were to offer you several sure fix keys to happiness and success. But I did feel that I could reinforce some pillars of conviction for you to hold on to, to believe in, especially in these times of momentous challenge. Pillars which I know full well have been admirably inculcated in you at your very enabling school. These last few months have reminded us not to be obsessed with ourselves, but to be kind and caring to others around us, to be helpful, not hurtful. These last few months have taught us that the individual barricaded in a high security mansion cannot survive alone without regard to a community which can be as large as that of all human beings everywhere. These last few months have taught us to be responsible to and for each other. And these last few months have taught us that we must harness the great advances in science and technology as forces for good. And so, how to end? Well, by suggesting that these realizations have something to do with you and give you a great responsibility. When I was at school, we were always being told that we were going to be the leaders of the future. Decades later, it is now your turn to take up the baton, starting with year 13, as you head off to the University of Life. You are the future leaders. You will have the education to lead others out of ignorance and towards empowerment. Have also the compassion to be kind. Have also the courage not to be fearful of the future. Have also the integrity to do not what can be done, but what must be done. And if I, like Polonius, were to give paternal or more exactly grandfatherly advice to year 13 on your way, to your next major milestone, there are one or two ideas that I would like to get in, in the English of today. With all your insecurities, with all your doubts, live convinced that everything is going to turn out fine in the end. Don't give in, don't give up, and most of all, for me personally, think for yourself. I wish you well. We all wish you well in the days of great promise that lie ahead of you. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>